For the past 12 years, I've been working as a web developer using tools like Node.js, Angular React and of course .NET and Blazor. And many new aspiring developers like you maybe have asked me over the years, hey Patrick, if you had to start all over again today, what would you do? Well, today I will answer this question and give you seven steps to becoming a professional .NET and Blazor developer after you hit that like button. Step number one is master C-sharp fundamentals. Now, when you think about building a house, the very first step and most important step is building the foundation, right? And with web development, it's the exact same thing. Start with the basics of C-sharp. Focus on things like variables, loops and methods, and then move on to more advanced topics like object-oriented programming, inheritance and interfaces. It's also helpful to already practice link and async and wait for real-world scenarios. So C-sharp is the foundation of everything regarding .NET web development. So mastering it is key. Step number two is build a web API. Now APIs let your app talk to other systems. For instance, imagine a weather app pulling data from a weather service API. Now start with the basics, create endpoints and handle CRUD, meaning create, read, update and delete operations. And maybe already explore connecting to a database and have a glance at authentication. Now this is a great way to build the backend of your web applications. Step number three would be entity framework. This is how you work with databases in .NET. Entity framework acts as a bridge between your code and the database. For example, instead of writing SQL queries manually, which is, don't get me wrong, also a good exercise from time to time, you can use link to query data in a way that feels more natural in C Sharp. It saves a ton of time. So practice setting up models, defining relationships, and as mentioned, running queries using link. And you should also learn code first migrations to handle database changes. It's a must have skill for working with your data in your apps. And by the way, what is also a must have for you is my new series of roadmap courses to help anyone become an expert in .NET and Blazor development. Just join the waiting list using the link in the video description below to be the first to know when these courses are available. Now, step four is Blazor maybe my favorite one together with .NET Web APIs. Blazor is a powerful tool for building interactive web applications. With Blazor, you can build a simple portfolio page, a small to-do list single page application, full-fledged browser games, or even big e-commerce monsters. Anything is possible. Start by learning Blazor SSR or static server-side rendering. And after that, dive deeper into the server, web assembly, and auto render modes. With that, you will learn to create reusable components and handle user interactions. Additionally, it's also important to learn how to fetch data from your web APIs. So long story short, Blazor lets you build full stack apps just using .NET. Step number five is authentication and authorization. Now let's say you're building an online store. Authentication ensures only registered users can place orders, while authorization makes sure admins can access management features, for instance. So both are essential for protecting your app and your users. Start with hashing passwords, for instance, and implementing JSON web tokens, and then explore tools like OAuth and identity. Understanding these concepts will help you protect user data and control access. So security is a big part of professional development. Step number six is clean architecture and advanced patterns. Think of clean architecture as organizing your app into clearly defined layers like domain, application and infrastructure, for instance, making it easier to maintain your application and scale. For example, with CQRS, command query responsibility segregation, you can separate how you read data from how you write data, which is super helpful in larger applications. You can also learn the mediator pattern for better code organization, for instance, and another interesting architecture would be the vertical slice architecture. Now, this step helps you write code that scales well. And finally, step number seven, deploy and optimize your apps. So finally, learn to write tests. 
and deploy your apps. Think of testing like a safety net. It catches bugs before your users do. So it makes your apps more reliable and saves you countless hours of work because you notice directly when one of your changes is breaking your app. Start with unit tests for individual methods and then move on to integration tests for APIs. And for web applications, try also end-to-end -end testing with tools like Playwright. And if you want to dive really deep into testing, check out what test-driven development or TDD is. Now for deployment, tools like GitHub Actions and Docker automate the process with continuous integration, making it faster and more reliable to ship your apps to Azure or any other hosting service. So testing is very useful for catching bugs early and deploying your apps takes them live for real users. And now step number eight would be following my roadmap courses, but as I said, they are not out yet. So join the waiting list right now using this link right here, or just click the link in the video description below. I am really looking forward to seeing you there. Happy coding.